There's a secret sauce. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my name's Johnny Walker. I'm an agent here at my home group. How many folks here are from my home group? Raise your hand. So everybody's my home group agent? Cool. Um, one thing I always like to say at the beginning of any class I teach, you guys ever gone to a class and thought, who, who is this guy and why is he teaching us? It's like, where does, where does he get the gumption to get up in front of us? So I've been in real estate a long time. I was an LO for years. I was a title rep. I taught uh, how to buy an auction for a year and then finally decided that there were too many realtors that just weren't real smart and I could kick all their asses. So I went and got my license mm -hmm. and I came in and kicked all their asses because they just don't work or they just don't study or they just don't provide themselves with what they need to be successful. So that's who I am. I've owned my own business since 1986. So I'm a business owner. I'm just an agent here. I am part of the ambassador program for my home group. Um, I'm agent number 86 with my home group, and we now have 3,386. So I've been here since Mark and Jeremy were wondering how to fill out a contract. So I've been with these guys a long time. Yeah. I know them, I trust them. This class is all about what I love about my home group, and that's that, that it's all about sharing and helping each other, and, and that's their culture here. That's what they built, and I'm, I'm totally bought in on it. And if I was a tattoo guy, I'd have the tattoo. So, <laughs> uh, but I'm not a tattoo guy. So there's another story about that too. But that was when I was in the navy, and we don't want to go back that far. <laughs> Trust me. So um, basically, one one of the things that I've always said that the that the brokerage is lacking is recognition, name recognition, which we're now taking care of. So if any of you are in the Elevate program, you know that Elevate now has commercials all over TV, radio, streaming, Facebook, pay-per-click, we're all over the place, but we're not this guy who would buy it any other way, or stay in your house forever, and we'll just, whatever. So there's a lot of BS going on on TV. Um, so the gist of the Elevate program, which I was one, I'm one of the founders of, was to get the word out that my home group agents are the ones you want to work with. That's what this class is all about. So if you write an offer and it, they see that you're my home group agent, our goal is to make everybody in the Valley know, hey, those guys are sharp. You know, they have a lot of classes, they teach a lot, those agents are sharp. I get in trouble when I do this. I used to have a, a thing before my class that said parental advisory because I'm from the south side of Chicago and I swear once in a while. But <laughs> I was told I can't do that anymore, but. But realistically, the, the more notoriety or, 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 or exposure that the, that the brokerage gets as a brokerage is better for all of us, all of us, because then we're gonna get a name of, hey, you know, every time I do a deal with a my home group agent, it really works out well. So that's, that's my ultimate goal on why I did this class. Everything I'm about to tell you today, I actually did. These are not made up stories. They're, they're actually <coughs> properties that I've closed on. I've had, I've had luck, skill, I don't know what it is, let's just call it luck because I don't want to brag, but um, about a month ago I had a client showed him a property at 9.30, I was under contract by 1.30 with no, with no bullshit or extra crap that you got to go through, so it's possible, but it's all about knowledge, it's all about knowledge is the secret sauce, and what you know, and what conversation you're having with the other agents. So let me, let me start with telling you that I believe and this is a big number. I believe 90% of real estate agents have no business filling out contracts. Because if, if, if you can't quote our contract, it's nine pages. It's not that difficult. And the most important page of our contract is what? Page eight. That's where you get to write in what you want. Mm -hmm. That's where you get to decide how this transaction is gonna go. That is the most vital page of our contract without question, section eight, okay? So keep that in mind as I'm telling you guys this stuff and, and it'll make sense. So um, how do we get our offers accepted? Well, there's a couple different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Praying, I, I, I have no problem with that. Begging, I'm not big on that. Bribery, like I said, I'm from Chicago, so I'm a little familiar with that. Um, mm -hmm. Send some guys, those would be my So my home group per, uh, condone send these guys? <laughs> I'm just saying these are common methods, <laughs> and some of which I learned growing up on the south side of Chicago, so uh, forget about it. Quit and go get a job at Starbucks, which I believe there's a lot of realtors should do that. Um, or be a professional, be prepared. So being prepared is actually the secret sauce. That's ultimately what we want to do. 
Um, and this is my first time teaching this class, guys, so I'm, I'm gonna kind of jump around a little bit, so until I get it perfected, okay? Um, okay, so have a conversation about your with your client. So um, there's gonna be like a audience participation here, and we're all gonna share stuff that works. So um, talk about real estate basics. How's the contract work? How does the process work? We're gonna go find a property, and right now it's really difficult to get under contract. You gotta, you gotta make sure that there's a whole nother screen here talking about expectations. So you gotta, you gotta map out exactly what your plan is and then stick to your plan, okay? Um, this is how I work with my clients and, it, and it's working for me, so I'm gonna keep doing this until it doesn't work anymore. Um, your expectations and theirs, uh, why I'm the best realtor for the job, what my experience is, and if you don't have a lot of experience, Guess what? You got my home group. I went to I went to my home group for a reason. You know, I can get help with anything. So whatever inexperience I have, I've got 3,200 agents that are going to help me get this done for you. If that's what you're, if that's the way you got to go, then that's the way you got to go. And and how many times have you gotten calls on Saturday, Sunday, Friday night? Calls. Yeah. You call the broker hotline. Craig's there. There's eight people on it now. Hmm? Well, I'm the only one on the agent helpline. <laughs> Oh, well, you're going to talk to Craig. Yeah, so you're going to talk to Craig. And that's why I asked him to be here. There's a lot, he gets a lot of questions on what should we do with this, what should we do with that. And there's no stupid question ever, ever in real estate. Never a stupid question. The stupid question is the one that doesn't get asked. That's the stupid question. Um, financing options. Brian's going to talk to you a little bit about Homeward. I use Homeward on almost every, every offer that I write, whether it's to get my other offer, my, my formatted offer with a traditional financing or to use Brian. So I use it both ways. If this is the best way, we've got it. If it's not the best way, I got something else. So and I'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay? Getting a pre-qual or pre-approval. Super important. Super important. Um, anybody anybody put clients in their car without a pre-qual or a pre-approval? Why would you? Yeah, let's go look at million dollar houses. Great but we can only afford $250,000 houses, so we're gonna only be able to look at their garages, and then we'll make a decision <laughs> on whether or not that's what we're looking for, okay? Um, Must-haves and wants, very important conversation you wanna have with your clients. This is all before you guys ever hit the streets. This should be conversations that you have. Timing, super important on timing. I'm gonna show you the right questions to ask when it comes to, to uh, timing with the listing agents. Okay, super important that you get the timing aspect of things done and what tools you have to use, okay? All right, this is kind of, this is where everybody throws in. I just put up some ideas on here. So these are the questions you want to ask your buyers. Right, is everybody here working with buyers or, I mean, obviously we'd all just like to work with listings, but <laughs> everybody's working with buyers, right? right? Okay. So what's the family dynamics? That's the first question. Mom, dad, kids, dog, goldfish. Um, uh, religious needs, need to be close to a synagogue, uh, want to be close to a Catholic church, whatever that might be. Find out what that, that dynamic is. Dogs, they have dogs, there's certain places they can't live. Age restrictions, there's age restrictions. There's so many different questions that you want to get under 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 paper, on paper, so that they, they can move on. And you're not wasting your time showing properties that have an age restriction when they're 28, right? So it doesn't make sense. Um, kids. Ages, schools, what kind of schools do the kids want to be? Um, there's a school in Scottsdale called Basis. Anybody familiar with that? Really tough to get into. You gotta be super brainy. It's like five hours of homework every night. Definitely wouldn't have worked for me. Um, but that's all stuff that you want to ask. Other than, you know, two bedroom, three bedroom, two bath, all that stuff. These are other things that you want to ask. Uh, what kind of property? Single family condo? Do they want acreage? What kind of needs do they have? RV gates, workshop? extra room for office, geographical needs, and then I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about synonyms in the procedure. So what are some of the other things that a lot of agents don't think about to ask when they're having that first discovery with their buyer clients? Anybody? Within their code of ethics. <laughs> Before the pre-approval, you're saying? Pre-approval? Gotta have that for sure. Well, yeah, I mean like, a question you ask before they have the pre-approval? Yeah, I'm just no. saying in discovery. So here I'll add one. Um, what about a single level house? Oh, or, or if it's a double level, can grandma get upstairs to the bedroom or do you have to have a, a bedroom on the ground floor? Stuff like that. All that will help you when you're, when you're looking. So with the amount of inventory we have right now, 
uh, which is going up, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a comment on that in a little bit, but um, you can really narrow down exactly what people are looking for. My process is always to say, show me perfect. Pool, RV gate, uh, a dog house in the back with an orange tree and a house that's yellow, whatever, whatever perfect is, I ask my clients, tell me what perfect is. Okay, and then we're gonna go do a search. And when it comes up this, we're gonna say, okay, now we gotta change What's something. Negotiable? <laughs> yeah, now we gotta change something. So which of these items on this list is non-negotiable? Well, we need three bedrooms for sure. And we have to have a two-car garage. And you know, so then you can narrow it down and then you can open it up a little bit. Like, okay, well, we really wanted lakefront property, but if that's not possible, then we can move on from that. Or, um, you know, we didn't want, pine trees because they're a mess and whatever whatever it might be can be a million things so knowledge i'm going to go right back to this knowledge is power the more you know about what they need the easier this process gets and the easier it becomes to get them under contract and you'll see that in a minute okay so one of my biggest pet peeves is you ever get an email from somebody and wonder what fpt means or soq or asap or pdq or Cinnamon, like what's a Binzer? What's a COE? What's what's all that stuff? I can't tell you how many realtors I talk to that are like they talk to their clients. They're like, well, COE is going to be on this date, and we're going to do a Binzer here. It's going to be a Spuds over here, and they're like, and they feel like, well, I shouldn't ask because I'm stupid. So my process is always to say, hey, look, we're going to have a Binzer. That's a buyer inspection seller's response. So if I say Binzer, that's what it is. But I'll keep calling it by name until they say we know what that Binzer is. Okay, close the escrow. Little stuff like that. Remember that we do this all day long. They do it once every five or ten years. So they don't know all these all these terms. So try to be respectful of the fact that you don't want to make them feel stupid. Because they won't ask. Because they'll feel like, oh, but it'd be a dumb question to ask. Maybe I shouldn't ask that. So one of my early questions or comments is, mm -hmm. instead of saying, you got to go call Paul and get a pre -qual, I like to say, you need to have a conversation with a lender to determine what your, what your budget is. Because... You need to have a financial partner, so Paul's a good one. And so you're going to call Paul, and you're going to discuss what your budget is. Because you may be willing to make a certain payment a month, and he may say you could make more, but you don't want to. Yeah. And, and somehow that a, a pre-qual seems uh, kind of in your face. we got to get you qualified before we can show you something. You know, so I like calling it a budget. I like saying, yeah, talk to the lender about what your budget should be, and then we'll know what to... What kind of properties we can show you? Yeah, we have a slide here to, to discuss what the different financing options available to you are. And then my my way of doing things, I'm like, which of those do you feel sounds best for you? And you give them, give them multiple options. Homeward changed the game for us, for everybody. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Homeward or not, but it changed the game big time. Brian's going to talk about that in a second, okay? All right. There's the, what I was just talking about, about the Simmons. Um, Okay, so uh, if you have a meeting with your clients, a husband and wife, I, I suggest always, always on the first meeting, make sure it's both the decision makers because then you're gonna do it twice. Because if you have the conversation with the husband, the wife's gonna come in and say, okay, how does this work? And it's like, well, I already talked to your husband brother. Try to avoid that. Try to get both in the room. You know, if you're showing property and sometimes the husband can't be there, that's a different story. But when you're having your initial conversation with any buyer, please try to have both decision makers in the room so that you're starting out on the right frame. And then that's also a good time to find out what's the best way to communicate. Text, email, smoke signal, Insta pictures, chap snap, or whatever, what all those things. So <laughs> hey, that's when you wanna ask that, okay? Explain what a fiduciary is. Um, everybody should know, oh, do I need a little pointer? You know, if I hit the wrong button, I'll ruin the whole thing so long. Mm -hmm. Everybody should know the, the definition of fiduciary. Not only that, I feel that you should have it printed on a piece of paper. So when you sit down and talk to your clients, you don't have to read it to them. Just put it on the table. They'll read it. Okay? And then as the conversation goes, tell them, I work for you. You tell me, how do you want to do this? Do you want to look on Saturdays? Do you want to look on Thursday evenings between 5 and 7? You know, you now have a fiduciary duty to them to do what's best for them as far as their financial decisions, okay? Really important. And then this is my biggest pet peeve, and I love Mark Hutchins like a brother, but sometimes I want to kill him. Because every time I talk to him, he's like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, put down your phone for just a second, okay? That's getting more and more of a big deal nowadays. 
people are getting ticked off that you're that this thing is it's like an instant time suck it's like it's like you can't go five minutes my kid if he's not on his phone i would be scared if i took his phone away what would happen to him he would be freaked out which i did last week with mm -hmm. okay all right communication what's the best way to discuss the that what's the best time to reach me this is their expectations so discuss what their expectations are and how how that's going to work with how you do your job okay there's going to be a give and take here um sometimes they may not they may not want to ride with you in your car they feel unsafe some realtors don't want people in their car because it's unsafe and you don't have insurance if you get something to happen so all those things is this is where you discuss those kind of things okay um explain what a fiduciary is your staff i have a i have a staff that's an unpaid staff my my transaction coordinator is part of my team but my lender is part of my team my title company is part of my team my home inspector is part of my team um title is part of my team and those are constants those i mean they change but not deal to deal pardon me that's that's my team i, I work really hard to get the team that i have i i I inspire all of you to do the same thing. Try to get a lender that you can work with that, that answers your phone calls on Saturdays or Friday nights or whatever it is that you need. Interview companies. Obviously, the most important thing is going to be your escrow officer if you're a title, because without escrow, you got nothing. And there's title companies out there that'll they'll send you links to to the Cromford report and all that stuff. Find a title company that's actually going to help you find business. That's actually going to be a partner. Same thing with a lender. Okay, lenders aren't in the habit of saying, Craig, I got four buyers. Here you go. It doesn't happen. Okay, but if you have a relationship, it's possible. Okay? Anybody got questions on who else is on the team or you should have on the team? Okay? Please don't hesitate to ask questions as I go. Um, do you know what the difference between judicial and non judicial is? So, this is a big deal for me. I have billboards all over Chicago touting my relocation program. And when people from Chicago come here, they're blown away that there's no lawyer involved in a real estate transaction. They're like, well, wait a minute, who protects me? I do. Super important that you pick the right realtor and the right title company because they're actually the ones that are gonna protect you through this con this whole transaction. So in, in, I don't know, all the states, most of the Northern and East Coast states are all judicial. In other words, you have to have a lawyer involved in it, which just costs more money, mm -hmm. right? So our contract is set up and it's very rarely changed. I think the last one was 2017. It's the last big change. It's when every, that's when we got rid of warrantable and non-warrantable and all that stuff in the contract. So now every home is sold as is. So they kind of took the whole lawyer piece out of it. But anybody that's coming from out of town, if you're working with out of town people, they need to know the difference between judicial and non-judicial. And if you have more questions on that, feel free to catch me and I can explain it better. So a comment when people are talking about the fiduciary, you as a real estate agent are a licensed legal representative for the purposes, for the small scope of helping someone with real estate. So you are a licensed legal representative. And that's a responsibility that you carry. So you're you actually licensed to practice law in one specific area, okay? Okay, so now you gotta have a conversation with them about what a seller's market looks like because that's what we're in. Okay, don't bother telling them what a buyer's market looks like because we're gonna see that for a while. You're just wasting your time. Um, talk to them about what a seller's market is. Talk to them about, uh, you know, we might show, we might look at 20 houses and we might write offers on nine of them and we might not get any of them. So I want you to kind of take the emotion out of it during the business process of it. It's a really important conversation to have for them. I'll tell you when to get excited, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you that you can now put on your happy face and blow up balloons and all that stuff. But but right now, if you can just step away from it and look at it as a business transaction, and I know it's your kids and it's where they're gonna go to school and there's a lot to do with it, so be respectful of that, but try to curtail their excitement until you get under contract because it's difficult, okay? Because that's most likely gonna happen. Everybody, anybody here writing offers that aren't getting accepted? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, everybody. Hopefully after this, you'll have less. So, mm -hmm. okay. Um, talk about this, the economics of supply and demand. That's really what the seller's market's all about. We have no supply for big demand. Everybody's moving to Arizona from California, Chicago, and Colorado, and Seattle, and everybody wants to move here, which is great, mostly, 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, Arizona's a destination state, so we got a lot of people coming in. Um, uh, we, we talked a little about the process and make sure that they understand it. Um, have prepared material for them that backs up everything you're saying. That, so you're not reading to them. So if you've ever been to a class and somebody says, hi, if you are an active realtor, I mean, it's like, come on, you're not teaching anybody anything. So give them stuff to read. Let them, stuff that's not going to confuse them. So all, all my buyers and sellers, I make a packet for them. And, and I mean, no disrespect to anybody, but I keep it at like a fifth grade level because you don't know who you're dealing with, but you want to make sure they understand stuff. And if they're offended by it, they're probably, they're probably not really, and they're probably not somebody you want to work with, to be honest with you. But anybody here fire a client? Last week, I fired a client. I was like, yeah, I just, I can't help you. You have to. <laughs> okay, um, prepared materials, buyer's guide. Buyer's guides are great. Title companies can provide those for you and they can uh, co-brand them. So your name and picture are on them. Great tools. Um, anything you guys have as far as Brian or, or uh, Paul, as far as helping agents with the process of lending that you guys hand out? Okay, so there you go. Get a hold of your lender. We'll get into you guys a little more. I'm not just trying to fluff you off. So, um, but yeah, your team should have a lot to do with what what it is that you're presenting to people and how professional you look based on what you're presenting. Okay, um, discuss disclosures. Get that conversation out right up front. Okay, um, I'm big on a buyer broker. A lot of people are scared of it. Anybody in the room scared of it and willing to admit it? Nobody. I was. Because I was like, how am I going to get them to sign this? Then they're going to feel like, ah, oh, I'm not. Trust me, if you're selling yourself, they're going to sign it. If you tell them the right reason for the buyer broker and that it protects everybody, and it's a contract. I work for you now, okay? That's disclosures, buyer broker, all that stuff. Important stuff. Okay, communication. Ask them what the best way to communicate with them is. Who's the primary contact, him or her? We kind of discussed that. But in every, in every situation you have, one of them is going to be the go-to person that you call, and the other one's going to be secondary. Figure out who that is and make sure you respect it because they're expecting you to respect it, okay? Um, here's, my, here's my golden ticket conversation. I tell people all the time, I'm like, look, at, I might not be the right guy for you. I'm a straight shooter. If we go look at a house and you guys are dog out over it and I see something that's really bad, I'm going to tell you. That's my job, because I want your business and your aunt, uncle, sisters, cousins, friends, I want all their business. So I have to do what's right in my heart and make sure that you're doing the right thing because they don't know what they don't know. Does that make sense? Buyers don't know what they don't know. They have no idea. If they've never done this, they're first time home buyers, they really don't know. And if they're second, third, or fourth time home buyers, doesn't mean they did it a week ago. It means they did it five years, 10 years, 15 years ago, and it's all changed, okay? So have a really direct conversation with them on, on what your process is and make sure it works. Because if it doesn't, you're gonna end up spending a whole lot of time with something that's gonna bear no fruit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> um, okay. Now we're gonna get into the, into the, the hard facts of it. Lender needs. Um, your conversation with them is, how are you intending to purchase your home? Are you gonna be cash? Are you gonna finance? Are you gonna partially finance? Are you gonna have a big down payment? Tell me a little bit about how that looks. Well, we have to sell this house first, okay? So there's a contingency. Um, we're gonna be out of the country from July 5th through whatever, okay? Those are all things you wanna get in, in, your, in your hands before you even hit the streets. All that stuff is important. It's all what? It's all knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the better off you're going to be when you hit the streets. Okay? Then, my next conversation is with the lender. So, I have a, I have a lender that I'm, I'm partnered up with. His name's Jim Zabo from Fairway. And Jim is, Jim is my go-to guy. I can call him at Friday on 8 o'clock. Most likely going to be at my house drinking. But, <laughs> but I can call Jim anytime I want and I can get a pre-qual. I can get whatever I need most of the time. You know, within expectations, he's, he's awesome. He's there for me. And then homeward is another big, big part of my presentation. You'll see that in a second. Okay. All right, we kind of discussed, this is all lender stuff. Um, here, I'll tell you another story. So because I was a lender, um, the lenders that I work with, and Jim's not my only lender, but he's my go-to. 
Um, I have conversations with my clients and say, hey, look, the lender, they're going to ask you for documents. They're going to ask you for the same document twice. I'm just telling you right now, that's going to happen. So if you can't have documents to them within 24 hours, not only can we not work with the lender, but you can't work with me. Because we're all trying to, to find you a home to move into. We're all on your team. We're all trying to help you. You have to understand that this process is tedious. It's a pain in the neck. And your lender's going to ask you for a document. You already sent them. And he's going to ask for it twice. So if that doesn't work for you, maybe another realtor or another lender would be best. None of them walk away, but now they all know in their head, okay, I got to stay on top of this. And lenders love that conversation. Paul, I mean, oh, yeah. it's like, yeah. And if they have, the document says it's it's page five of six and the last page is blank, he still needs that page. You know, have those conversations. And I was a lender, so I kind of understand that I sat in that seat. So know as much as you can about the lending process, but only know enough to call your lender. My card says realtor, his card says lender. I like to stay in my lane. Do I know more than I'm giving up? Yep but I like to stay in my lane, let the lender have that conversation. Because guidelines have changed since I was a lender, all kinds of stuff have changed, okay? Okay, team approach, we kind of did this. Me as the, as the team lead, as the realtor, the clients, the lender, the title company, the home inspector, the home warranty rep. Um, make sure that your clients understand what each of those people have as a role in this process. So I also created a, 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 a uh, I guess it's kind of a 501 secret um, for veterans. It's called Brothers in Arms. And uh, the Brothers in Arms stands for um, Arizona Real Estate Mortgage Specialist. It's all vets dealing with vets. So I have, I'm a vet, I'm a disabled vet. My title guy's a vet. My home inspector's a vet. My home warranty's a vet. My title's a vet. My lender's a vet. They're all vets. So it's all vets helping vets. Um, if you have something like that that you're working, make sure they know about that, okay? and know the importance of it too. Okay, all right, now we're gonna get into financing. I'm, I'm gonna let Brian come up and tell you guys a little bit about how Homeward works. Um, so identify a lender. What are you guys gonna do? We already asked the questions, cash. Have you spoken to a lender about getting pre-qualified? No, we haven't. Okay, so we're done. For right now, we're done. We have to get that done. That's the first step. We have to make sure we know what to look for. We don't wanna go out and look at million dollar houses when you can only afford a $400,000 house. It's a waste of your time and it's a waste of mine. And we're trying to get this job done, have that conversation, okay? Um, identify, this is, kind of a, this is kind of a fork in the road. So because I was a lender and I know a lot about lending, I will go into a little depth on this on whether they're FHA or VA or, or uh, you know, down payment assistance. But let your lender ask those questions because they're the pro. And let them, the lender come back to you or sit with you and your clients and say, Here's what I think the best program for you would be. We're looking at putting 5% down. We're gonna go FHA, you know, we're gonna do this much in earnest money on a property like this and all that, all those details. Have all that before you hit the street. Okay. So here's a success story which I used homework for. Homework didn't get the business, but I used them to get it. I had a client that was pre-qualified for 600,000. Sun City, um, age restricted, and, uh, and uh, there was seven offers on the property. So the whole secret sauce of this class is the conversation you have with the listing agent, without question. That's gonna be the most important screen that we're gonna talk, talk to. I contacted the seller's agent, had my conversation with her, which we're gonna go through, and I said, you know, I actually have two different ways I can write this. This is after I, I got an understanding of what her seller is and what all that is. I said, I can write you a cash offer using a product called Homework. Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not familiar with it. Let me explain it a little bit. So then I tell him how Homework works. I said, or I can write this up with a contingency that they have to sell their house. And their house is at 11113 Main Street. It's on the market for X amount. I can send you the listing. It's not live but I can take it live as soon as we decide what we're gonna do here. Which offer do you think they went with? Oh. Mm. The contingency. They went with the contingency, oh. blew me away. Oh. Wow. But I offered them both. So now, if I'm a seller's agent, I'm looking at this thing like, okay, I have to do what's best for my client, right? 
her client wasn't in a hurry to get out of the house. She actually wanted to stay for like two weeks afterwards, which we could do that with homework, don't get me wrong. There's, there's a lot of options with homework. But it was even better for my client and her client to go with the contingency long after I gave her all the information she would have to look up. So what did I do? I assumed that the listing agent wasn't really sharp. She turned out to be very sharp, but I assumed that she wasn't. So I explained to her in a very educational and a nice way, not to make her sound stupid, not to make her feel like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I, I explained it. So as you know, Alicia, if we go under contract and it's at this, I mean, you pulled the comps, I pulled the comps. We know that the appraisal is gonna probably be an, an issue and we're gonna probably have to do some kind of appraisal waiver or, or a shortfall or something. So, I mean, that's on the table. I think we're all agreed to that, right? Keyword, right? And then what, you, what do you think she said? Yeah, you're probably right. right. So be realistic. The market's the market. It's not changing from client to client. It's The market is what it is. So we went through all that. I explained to her how the contingency would work and, and what the other end of the deal is. And I showed her all the paperwork she needed to see for the other deal that I already had in hand. And she went with the contingency, which was great. Because Homeward, while it's great, it adds a whole nother step to the transaction which sometimes is, it makes it more difficult, not only for the sellers, but for the buyers as well. So there's really good and really bad to home. And the owner's sitting right here, and I'm telling you the flat out truth because he's gonna tell you the same thing. Actually, he might not say that. So why don't you come on up, Brian? Right? Explain a little bit about homework. Yeah. Bring me some seats. Always surprises for <laughs> So this is Brian Gubernick. Brian's been in real estate for a little while for a, a couple, years. couple you know, days. It used to be, it used to be the young guy. Then I woke up one day and I was like the old, you know, green vet. I don't know what happened. Yeah. It kind of happened like that. Um, I, around here, my claim to fame is I think I did the very first podcast with Mark and Jeremy when they started the Daily Dose upstairs in like the twelve hundred square foot space. And you were number eighty six, eighty seven. No, in the, in the conference room. Right. Well, what I, whatever it was, we had a mic hanging. It was not yeah. quite the the deal they have going today. But uh, I've been around real estate and been around Phoenix real estate since 2006. So I decided to dive into real estate like right at the prime time. Perfect. And for some of you that laugh, you know exactly what I mean. For those that, have, that aren't laughing, that was, the, that was not the greatest moment. But my entire career for the first five, six years was all short sales like everybody else in Phoenix. But that's how I built my team and, and, and did all of that. Um, so I've been around real estate. I'm a realtor. I still have my real estate team. I'm still in the brokerage space. I still am entitled. I still do these things. But the past year and a half, almost two years, I joined a friend of mine, another realtor, at a company that he started constructing actually called Homeward, which is based out of Homeward, which or Homeward, based out of Austin, which uh, which you know we talked around Homeward a little bit uh, already. Had, is everybody familiar with or have any clue what this homeward deal is about? Okay, cool. Some some nod their head, some not a clue what you're talking about. Okay. Homeward is, like I said, a company based out of Austin. And it was started by my partner Tim. Tim, a real estate team owner, what he decided to do one day, he had these clients that he really liked, really loved, actually, like clients that had been with worked with his team multiple times. And they owned a home but wanted to buy a new one. And the market was heating up in Austin. This was about four years ago. Market was, market was heating up in Austin. And they realized they could not go buy that new one and sell, or I'm sorry, and have this contingency. Their offer would be taken. And they didn't know what to do. And Tim really kind of felt for him and said, you know what? Uh, it was a 500 or so thousand dollar home they wanted to buy. They were in a 350, which in Austin these days, that's hilarious. Like Austin's five times that. <laughs> but at that moment, you know, they were trying to move closer to town, school district. He really bought into, you know, the, the, the reasons for moving for the family. He said, you know what? I have some money set aside. Let me go buy this one that you want for you. Now, Tim's a business person. Tim said, I'll, I'll take this 500 in savings that I have. I'll buy. Now, don't, when I say he's a business person, Tim knew he was making 15K commission there. He also knew once they moved in, he was going to be the one listing their old home for three fifty. So he was going to make another ten thousand five hundred. So Tim saw a twenty five thousand dollar opportunity. Just to be super clear, he is a he is an entrepreneur. He is a business person. He goes and buys their home, right? The one that they wanted. They move in. He lists their old home for sale. 
he sells their old home, and then shortly thereafter, they buy back the old, the, the new home from him that they're already living in, using the cash or a portion of the proceeds and getting a loan and buying back. Mm -hmm. Tim had that experience and it was a, like a massive light bulb moment. He was like, not only what, what, did he see this as an opportunity, but he also says it was the most rewarding transaction he had ever been part of in his career. And this is a guy that's run a team that, that is literally one of the top 10 in the nation still today doing thousands of transactions. He said it was the most rewarding transaction he ever had, and I could see why, right? Like, it really helped him, he really solved. He was no longer the guy with the lockbox key. He was no longer the guy talking about how much he charges in commission compared to, to, the, to the next guy or girl coming in behind him. He's no longer the guy just talking about how his marketing plan is different. He actually gave a solution to a real problem that was different and unique. He starts using this or starts building this within his team and quickly sees this is so much bigger than my team. And that was the birth of Homeward. So a couple of years ago, uh, he starts growing it. I joined him. And now, today, we're in Texas, uh, Colorado, Georgia, Arizona. I just, we just opened Florida this week. We're hitting Washington, Oregon, and California in the coming months. And so the, pro the, the company, the two core programs of the, of the company are that buy before you sell concept that I just described. You've got a client has all their equity or dollars locked up in the home in which they reside. They also know they can't go write an offer that's contingent upon their old home sale. And for many of them, by the way, many of them, is, they hadn't even put their hands up. Why? Because they don't want to deal with the headache that is trying to buy a new home before selling. They don't want to move in with their mother-in-law. I would love to move in with my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. But most of us would not. They don't want to go try to rent for six months and then buy. They don't want to deal with that, so they don't even put their hand up. They don't even consider buying. We've introduced this Buy Before You Sell program where they can actually go use our cash we go buy the home they want. We as homer go buy the home they want on the terms that you decide work with that client. We go buy, they move in, you list their old home for sale, you sell their old home, the day you sell their old home, you use the proceeds or a portion of those proceeds to buy back the new home from us. Make sense? Yeah, well, what if it's not the same amount? But it, it, it usually never is the same amount. It's yeah. usually a move up buyer. Our, our normal deal, in Phoenix is a 400, 450 sell buying 650. So they're all move ups. So they, they have to just qualify for, for a conventional mortgage. Oh, gotcha. That's all it is. Okay. So they're not paying cash. Like we're buying it with our cash. So it's a pure cash. Mm -hmm. We close 14 days, 21 days, whatever it takes to make it happen. They move in and then they go through the conventional loan process and buy back from us. That makes sense. Right? So whatever they qualify for normally is more or less what they're going to qualify for on, on our side. So what are the other terms and fees? I mean, I get that it's... Oh, that's a great question, right? So we're going to charge 1.9% of the acquisition, right? However, like a new home construction company, when they use our in-house in mortgage, when they use homeward mortgage, we're going to credit back in a buy before you sell, we're going to credit back 0.5. Okay, but... So it's going to be a net 1.4. If they don't have something to sell... Okay, that's the next product, right? So buy before you sell, that's how that works. They can use whatever lender they want, right? We certainly, I mean, we work with lenders all the time. We just, like, like New Home, are gonna incentivize them to use homeward mortgage. Now, if they don't have a home to sell, same exact process, just no home you're listing. Now it's, hey, I need, a, my client's $400,000, $500,000. I mean, in Phoenix, one out of every three offers right now is cash, meaning that if that listing, as you guys can do the math, that listing has three offers on it, you can almost guarantee one of them is gonna be cash. That's who you're competing with. And in that $400,000 segment, $500,000, you can almost guarantee yourself you're gonna be competing with cash. Mm -hmm. So in that scenario, you come to Homeward, Homeward would literally go and buy that home for cash. Your client just has to get, you know, we go through an approval process on the front end, but it's not a lot different than what you already experience. We go and buy that home for cash, close on it in 14 days or whatever it takes to make it happen. Your client moves in, and buys the home back from us. Now, in terms of fees on that, still the 1.9% acquisition fee, mm -hmm. but on those deal, on buy with cash when there's not a home to sell, we credit back 1.9% at closing when they use homeward mortgage. Again, they can still use their own mortgage company, but um, at 1.9% uh, fee credit back, it doesn't happen all that often, specifically on buy with cash. They're usually gonna use homeward mortgage. Mm -hmm. The only other cost that you should be, well, the only other, the main other cost of this is a rent, amount, like a per diem, like an amount that they're paying per day that they're renting the home back from us when, uh, before they buy it back. 
and that rent isn't even a market rent, it is our carrying cost that they just take over. I mean, How many really of your end buyers don't close? Very, 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 just, very few. Just that one, right, that you guys have been working with in Baptist or something? <laughs> we, I mean, we've had the maybe, I mean, it, it, as we're doing more units, naturally, we'll, we'll see more, but it's not often. I'll tell you, the only time someone's not buying back is if life really, really changes that between the time that we buy and the time that they buy back. And in that circumstance, I mean, you know, it is what it is. We're going to turn around and sell it, you know, and it's not the end of the world. We are not in the business, though, to be super clear. We are not an eye buyer. We are not in the business of buying homes, but that's not what we do. And you're not a hard money lender. We're not. No. We're, I mean, we're literally flat out buying with our cash. Mm -hmm. And our opportunity, just just being transparent, what do, where do we make our money? Mortgage and then title. Oh. Mortgage and title. Mortgage predominantly, titles and ancillary, uh, secondary, I'm sorry. So for you in this room, so as we're talking like today's topic, right? Like that's a great program, great programs. But um, what Johnny was saying, which I love, you, you might think this is crazy that I say I love this. The fact that you're getting to the table that you're having more conversations, that you're you're sitting in front of clients and acting as a true consultant, leveraging Homeward's products, but maybe not using them all the way through is awesome to me. That's phenomenal. I love that, right? And my thought is, as a realtor myself, like this is a, and I think this is where the agents that get it really excel, this is a massive lead generation opportunity. This is a massive lead conversion opportunity. Believe me, I want to do more business with you. Don't, to be clear, I am a business person too. However, I do believe that when you're talking to your SOI or when you're on the phone calling somebody or when you're holding an open house and you talk about, you know, someone walks into your open house. This is a good example. Brian, you just broke my rule. What's an SOI? Yeah. <laughs> Sphere of influence. Sphere of influence. Sorry, Sorry my bad. Sorry, you're <laughs> doing <laughs> Man, I'm I tried so hard. I tried so hard not to go with acronyms today. Man, I just get rolling. Uh, but what I was going to say in an open house, right? You're, you're, I mean, who's held an open house in here before? Okay, who's thinking about holding some open houses at some point? Okay, okay, cool. So the old realtor script: someone walks into your open house and you let them walk around, and then you make the joke, "Okay, you're ready to buy this one now?" And everyone's like, "Ha ha ha!" ha you know. And they say no, and you're like, okay, well, what didn't you like about it, or what would you like to see in your next home? And then they describe it. And then you say, here's the hook, you say, okay, cool, if that home was on market right now or came to market today, are you ready to go buy it? And what happens a lot of the time is they say, well, we already have our old home, we'd have to figure out what to do with that, I don't know if I want to deal with that. And we as realtors, historically, traditionally, what we do is immediately try to pivot to a listing presentation. You know what? I should come take a look at that home that you have to sell. Why don't we sit down? We'll talk about value. I can tell you how. That's the way we've always done it. Well, what's really cool with Buy Before You Sell, for instance, that program, is instead of using what, that script I just used, the traditional one, instead we're saying, uh oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, instead, we can actually now say, hey, you know, what if that home did come on market and you could go buy it for cash? before selling that one that you currently reside in? Would that be something we should be talking about? Well, I don't have that kind of cash. Yeah, the answer would be, what's the, what's the catch? Yeah, we should sit down and talk about that. That's always the question, what's the catch? Yep. That, it always is, what's the catch? Mm -hmm. The reason we do not do more business, the number one reason we do not do more business is because what we do is unconventional, mm -hmm. both to the consumer right. and to the realtor. Realtors actually, you know, wrapping our heads around this, this, this concept, it, it's not as clunky or as challenging as you think. There's a di an additional step or two, right? It's different. And a lot of times our deals end up being, well, I didn't want to, I, I wanted to go try the traditional route first because it's kind of what I know, right? And then it becomes a very reactive versus proactive. So what I'm saying here in this scenario is the most effective agents that we work with are those that are proactive in generating more business with the tools. You know, I just hope you go get more at bats and we get some opportunities. Can but I, I want you marketing the heck out of it and leveraging the heck out of it to get in front of more people. Let me add one thing too. Um, re remember too, like what Brian's saying, when you're having that conversation with a prospective client or a, 
all of a sudden you became very, very valuable. You're not just some realtor that can show them a house. Right. You're actually part of their process. Now you're, you're part of the family. You're bringing stuff that's going to help them. You got to leverage that. Yeah. That's, yeah. This is a leveraging tool. With, and I use it all the right. time. And I know, Brian, you want more business and I want more business. But this product makes you look like a hero. You're like, oh no, I, I truly believe we, we, you get more at bats and you get more opportunities to trickle down. It'll all take care of itself. So I'm obviously not a lender, but if I have a client who is pre-qualified, it was odd how I got this client, but anyway, they're completely pre -qualified. They qualify for 670,000. They don't want to go that high. They all want to, they only want to go in that you know difficult, Price range, 350. <laughs> that's, but, when you, that's when you get religious. But their lack of knowledge is, well, I don't want somebody else to run my credit. Because I work with a broker. I have a very, very tight connection with a broker. Mm -hmm. And we we wrote an offer Friday night, and the listing agent called me at 5 o'clock on Friday night. And he said, well, I tried to call on the lender. This is their lender, not mine. And um, she didn't answer. It's five o'clock on a Friday night. He's having drinks. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I said, well, I can go ahead and try to get a hold of him. But at that point, I explained to my buyers, I said, this is exactly why I was hoping that you guys would talk with my lender because I have a very tight connection and I can talk to that person 24 seven. He was in, he was in the Dominican Republic. I could talk to him. So um, their fear, and I'm guessing it would be the same thing with this situation is, well, we don't want somebody else running our credit. Mm -hmm. And I try to calm their nerves by saying, look, if it's all for one purpose, purchasing a home, it's one hit. Well, it doesn't Brian, matter if there's 10 of them. And Brian has more good news for you on that thing too. Mm -hmm. It's not a hard pull, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we're not hard pull. Until they commit, you know, we're gonna fully underwrite them when we get the process rolling so you know who you have. I mean, we're gonna do more underwriting than your traditional loan process because remember, we're buying a home. The risk, mm -hmm. right. right? So our risk is a little, so you know, once they go through our process, they're they're pretty darn solid, yep. right? So uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make, and, and I'm talking around the core products, but I really truly believe, I firmly believe this, I'm not saying it for a fact, and Johnny, you've been nailing it today on this exact thing. We as realtors, if we're going to be successful, especially in this market that's shifting, it is. I was looking at Crawford as you were talking, and it's crazy. Like if you read Crawford and just see the changes that are occurring every day, please. I'm not saying this is 2006, seven, eight, nine again. It's certainly mm -hmm. not. But things are changing, changing dramatically. Dramatically, and you factor in all of the technology and disruption that our industry is seeing. We as realtors, the only way we're going to continue to survive and thrive is if we maintain and honor the relationships that we have. The best way for us to do that, I believe, is to act as a true consultant. Again, we are not sitting across the table anymore just talking about our what we charge in our marketing plan. We have to function as a consultant. And in my mind, what does that mean? That means instead of sitting across the table, you're sitting on the same side of the table and you're opening up your menu of services. And you're saying, hey, here's the different things I provide. We could go the we could go the traditional route. Here's what that would look like. Uh, I've got this partner that I use that uh, we could go buy cash and you buy it back from them. And here's what that would look like. Here's what renting may look like. Here's what, dare I say it, the I buyer path may look like. I think we have to be educated around all of this and function from that perspective. That's how we win. That's how we differentiate ourselves. And that's why I think you start talking around these cash programs because. Uh, they are a differentiator. They're a difference maker. Your brokerage has truly embraced it, which I love. I mean, you're a phenomenal partner, right? I wish all agents were as proactive as, as, as this office is being, because I think those that are proactive with it, you know, they cre create a larger database and ultimately over the course of time win the game. All right. That's so so I, would, I would add something. Yeah. Here. So uh, for those of you who don't know, so I like Paul. He's awesome. So I'm gonna, I, I, hate, I hate that we keep talking about other lenders, but I am gonna talk about other lenders. My wife is a regional manager, my son is a loan officer for another company. Mm -hmm. So clearly, I'm motivated to send a deal there. I talked to the parents of the loan officer assistant for my wife's team and said, this is the product <laughs> you need because you need to get, you need to find your, what you want that, that is so specific, you need to be prepared to jump on it when it's on the market, and you don't want to, I mean, FOMO, fear of missing out. FOMO is 
biggest motivating factor you have, fear of missing out. So you need to convince your client that they can get rid of the FOMO because they can go find their dream house the minute it comes on the market by being, but they have to be prepared by talking to the second lender, mm -hmm. Homer. Right. And Homer does a full qual, not a pre-qual. You know, if, if you call on a Saturday afternoon, Paul's gonna pull the credit and give you a pre-qual, but you, you gotta give them a few days because they gotta get all the bank statements and all this. But, and, and Paul will do that too for you get all that stuff. So when he calls on your offer, he's like, these people are fully qualified. We can get an appraisal and we can close this deal. That's the same position homework gets in. But even if you say, I still want you to use Bob or whoever your person is, 1.9% to make a cash offer is cheap. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is okay. cheap. I mean, so you're gonna get a better view yeah. and probably can offer a little less. I mean, right now you're not offering under market, but right. you might you know, only have to do 10,000 over and get it on a cash offer and you'd have to do 50,000 over right. and you'd have to consider your... Right. And let me give you a statistical assurance of that. So so anybody here old enough to review art? Anybody here remember the flying Melendas? They were the trapeze uh, artists, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, Brian is my safety. Uh, I'm, Brian, a, I'm a trapeze artist. Brian provides <laughs> that net that if you miss, you're not dying, you're just going to land in this net and be embarrassed. Okay. So while it's a great product and it actually really works and it's awesome, it's also a huge tool. And he knows, he's telling you right now, he's not going to get them all, but if he's at least at the table, he's getting a shot. Mm -hmm. as, as we want. We want, we want to crack at it. You know, as we've been talking about all of this, it's all right there. You know, there's this new, because I, I talk with agents all across the nation, um, given the nature of what I do today. I spent last week in Florida, the week before that I was in New York. Uh, and I'm talking, I was at Inman, I'm just talking to these agents, and I'll tell you, there's this new buyer remorse out there today. Like the old buyer remorse is I put a buyer in a property, it's a big purchase, they get in there, they're overwhelmed, and three weeks in, they're like, oh my God, I made the worst decision ever. And then, do you know how much the electric bill is? And then a month or two or three, and they're like, they settle down, they're like, I love it. This is great. I'm funny. Anybody have that experience? Yes. We've all been broke. Yes. There is a new form of buyer remorse. They move into the home after shopping and shopping and shopping. There he is. And <laughs> I've known this guy since I was like eight years old, so it's a little, you know, it's <laughs> um, Somebody locked the door. <laughs> uh, this buyer, they're shopping and shopping, and they finally get a home, and they move in, and they're not excited, and maybe they never get excited. Why? Because it's their fourth or fifth or seventh choice. I'm seeing that a lot. Yeah. It, they, they, like, they're like, okay, fine, we're happy we got a house. But it's not that one in the, in the school district with the pool. And then it's forever. Oh, well, if we were in that house, we would be. And, and, and I'm it. seeing it, and, and, and it's kind of, it, it's comical in a sense to talk about it, but it's real. Like, that pain is real, um, and I've seen that a lot. So I think it's our job to continue to do everything we can so that form of buyer remorse <laughs> never comes about. Right? The other form we'll work through, but regretting a home purchase. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. Okay, don't so, go far because we still have more of okay. a conversation about homework, okay? So uh, you touched on it a little bit, but um, because I try to push out homework to other people, other clients, mm -hmm. the biggest wall I have is a 1.9%, mm -hmm. and you said if you go with your lender, then you get some of, some of that back. They still can't see past that, and I'm having a really difficult time Okay. I got it. You got I, it? I got okay. the answer for you. Okay. I'm going to ask you this. This is just straight out okay. real estate. Stay here. Straight out real estate. If you find a property at 400000 you come in with a cash offer. How much difference is your cash offer mm -hmm. to the one with financing? Is it 2% more with financing? There's your answer. Yeah. If it's cash, you're going to buy the house for less. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's going to be fine. So when you have a comment, the most important part of this class is the conversation you have with the listing agent. That's going to come up here in a second. But if you're buying a house with homework, I guarantee you, you're, you're paying at least 2% less for the property because you're cash than you would be if you've got financing. Because financing is a question. Mm -hmm. You've got an appraisal. You've got an inspection. You've got a lender that's got to perform. There's all kinds of stuff that's got to happen. With cash, it eliminates all of it. That's why people take cash offers. Well, I'm going to get... I'm going to give up two or three percent, but it's going to be done in 12 days. And I've done it. I've actually, I've actually sat with clients and said, "Look, if you use homework, this is what we're going to offer." And I, I would assume you're probably going to get the property at this, 
but if you use conventional financing, it's probably going to be this. It turned out to be anywhere from three to four percent more. That's exactly. I mean, that's exactly the the what I share. I mean, that's wonderful. That's, that's the, the secret sauce. Other that's thing, the, the other thing to consider, like in our market here, appreciation's been about well, like I was like I said, I was looking at Crawford. It's been about twenty three percent. A little higher in different areas. So let's call it for 24%. Almost 1%. What's that? 9% a month. Magic. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, that, you know where I'm going with it, right? So you could spend the 1.9 credit, back, so 1.4 net today, or you could spend the next six months shopping and watch the market go up another 12%. Now, is it going to do that over the next year? None of us have a crystal ball. I think we'd all agree, though, appreciation is going to continue. So whatever that amount may be, if you wait two, three, four more months, that cost of 1.4%, net 1.4% is going to be significantly less than the appreciation opportunity you'll lose. Make sense? Okay. So I think between those two things, that's typically how we see the play out. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Uh, guys, uh, educate yourself on the, and, and uh, Kristen, Kristen said, did, we got stuff here, print out, that, that explains it all. Oh, all it. We've got so much information. All of you with access to, the, does everyone have a dashboard, a homework dashboard set up? No. And that's why I want to chime in real quick. And uh, hopefully everybody's staying for the mastermind too. Uh, Brian's going to be here, um, and we're going to chat all day. Uh, yeah, he's I mean, I didn't know I was staying, uh, but I mean, I'm going to say no. Staying. Um, <laughs> he's staying. Um, but if you have not set up your dashboard, it takes a minute, maybe two. Seriously, do it. Not to. It's free. It's all that stuff. The reason why is we did get one done, and she didn't have her dashboard set up first. And it created a delay. So yes. when your buyer's ready to go and they want to do this, and you're like, all right, you call, they're like, well, gotta have that set up. If you've identified the property, you could lose it in that time because you can't even write a homeward offer until it's done. So just set the dashboard up. It's done, it takes two minutes. That way you're set. So when you do get it, you're ready to rock and roll, the first thing. And then second, I'm sure they've touched on the testimonials from the ones we've gotten done. I mean, it's, it's, seriously uh, a game changer product, especially with the current condition that we're in right now. But the ones we've gotten done have been wildly successful, very smooth. The, the reps and the, the folks over there are super attentive. They're explaining to your client, explaining to you. It's like you know rolling out the red carpet service. Um, so it's just another arsenal to have in our toolbox. And it's a conversation right now that gets you into sellers you need to the table with a buyer who cares right it's truly a great conversation the commercials are running now speak to the cash offer all that stuff so kind of use that use the accolades of the brokerage to get these conversations but get your dashboard set up seriously seriously have your clients at least look at this give it a shot there's nothing in it for us as a company right it's truly just to help so and i like anybody else will hesitant at first, they've been like home runs, just knocking out of the park. It's another so, arrow in your corner. And I'll see you guys in the match. Thank you. I just wanted to make yeah. sure. No, thank see. you very much. So don't go far, because there's uh, a couple I'm more. I'm hanging out right here. I didn't, yeah. mm -hmm. so, so, so the flying lenders with the safety net, that's your answer to that question. That 1.9% or 1.4, depending on if they use homewards financing, trust me, if you're writing a cash offer, you're writing it at least 1.4 or 1.9 less than you were, if you were doing a, a traditional conventional loan or something. Okay? Okay, let's keep going. Uh, okay, PQ have some pre-approvals. Um, who who here has a lender partner that they're partnered up with? Okay, so I already know you. So your lender, does your lender call the listing agent? It's so important. My lender, I don't even have to tell him. I just send, he's copied on my offers that I send. He makes a call before, sometimes he calls and they haven't even opened the email yet. Yeah. But he's he calls, calling to and discuss. He also emails the approved uh, eligible. Yep, and, but he my, the my guy has a conversation. What can I tell you mm -hmm. about these clients? So, so what are we creating here? So, so far with that listing agent, you've created them two options on financing and given them a choice to make your offer look great. We're gonna have a conversation about what other questions you want to ask. But that's another thing they're gonna say. Wow, man, that Johnny Walker's a pro. His his lender called me. He's got two different options for him on conventional or, or homework. I mean, you're, you're starting to look like, mm -hmm. this guy knows what he's doing, this gal knows what, knows what she's doing. You know, that's, that's, um, that's what I'm building up to in here, okay? Okay, so identify the lender, programs, we talked about homework, um, and this, this works hand in hand with the, expectation, with the expectations. You wanna discuss this with, with your buyers. You know, we have a couple options here. We can go cash, and they're like, oh no, we can't go cash. And then when you tell them, no, actually you can, I got a program that you can go cash, 
and it's not going to cost anything. They're like, yeah, right. And then when you bring that knowledge, now all of a sudden you're giving more knowledge. I'm going to keep going to this word. The more you show them that you know, the more they're going to say, boy, did we pick the right realtor. This is where we want to go. Okay. I'm not just going to read all these guys. So um, that's another thing that Paul will tell you. Um, know the basics on lending, just the basics. You don't, you don't have to know all the guidelines, but know what the difference between a VA and a conventional and an FHA and, and are there any DPAs anymore? No, right now they're suspended. Yeah. So, so you know, just know the difference that, that educate yourself on the difference. Get with your lender and at least understand it, okay? Um, and, and right here, this is your job to, to show your clients the options and benefits and educate them as to the lending process. Because guess what? You're the quarterback. The realtor's the quarterback. He's a halfback, he's a wide receiver. You're the quarterback. You're calling all the shots. Make, make yourself look like you're the most important person and there's a reason for that because you have that knowledge, okay? All right, we, we kind of touched on this. What do you have to have? Have to have a pool, we have to have an RV game, we have to have this, we have to. So we kind of already discussed most of it, so I got a little ahead of myself, okay? The bottom line is where the transition is. This is what you have to have, and then you go, well, there's only two listings. Well, okay, maybe we don't need a pink garage. <laughs> we could live without a pink garage or a, a pigsty or whatever it might be, okay? Discuss seller's market and, and the timing aspect, okay? So your expectation conversation is, in the beginning, the most important conversation you're gonna have. And those of you that are experienced will back me up on this. You, you discover more about your client in that conversation that, that you're gonna use to help them than any other conversation. You gotta know what's important to them. Um, this is also the place where I have walked away from clients. Um, so if a client tells me, I really don't want to live in that neighborhood, there seems like there's a lot of Mexicans there. I'm done. I'm done. I can't help you. I'm sorry I can't work with you. Okay? That's extreme. I'm not, I'm not a racist in any way. I'm just saying that's how extreme people get. Um, especially people from Chicago. They can be rude and, and it's like, yeah, sorry. I, just, I, just, I can give you this guy's name. And then I find an agent that I hated. Yeah, try this guy. <laughs> <laughs> try Mark Hutchins. He's a good guy. <laughs> So, so guys, I, I don't have to read these. You guys can all read them. These are all really important things on showings. Um, definitely, definitely take, you look like a pro and you look knowledgeable. Remember that thing I said about they don't know what they don't know? Here's a perfect example. Street noise is a perfect example. So you're out showing properties on a Saturday afternoon, one o'clock. Is the traffic on that street gonna be the same as it is at five o'clock on Monday? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's your job to tell them that. I mean, and, and if it's important to them, you don't want them to find that out the week they move in and you knew it and they can go to you, why didn't you tell us? And of course you can always say, geez, I didn't know, I don't live there, but that's BS. You're not gonna get their cousins, uncles, aunts, all those other people. I always recommend once we're under contract, even before, drive by, come back by this house even without me, you know, at different times. I'm with you 100%. And go talk to the, go talk to the neighbors. Because that's who's allowed to be honest. I go talk to the neighbors honest, with them. Yeah, Let's walk absolutely. up and down the street and talk to some neighbors. Right. I do it all the time. Yep. Right. The problem right now is if you're writing an offer, you don't have time to go right. back. I mean, it, right. if there's a time schedule here that's, that makes you avoid all that stuff, right. it's tough. Right. But I'm with you 100%. But in those 7 to 10 days that you're doing the inspection, come back by here. Yeah. Because here's your time frame. I'll give you another one that really works. Really, really works. I use it in open houses all the time. If I do an open house in an area I'm not super familiar with, the first thing I want to find out is where's the closest animal hospital. Mm -hmm. You know why? I'm not an animal person. I mean, we have a dog, I mean, but I'm not like saving animals. But a lot of people are really into their pets, really into their pets, like kids. Know where the, know where the closest animal hospital is. People, you'll be amazed. People go, God, Fifi would be really safe here or spot or fight. Right, or nice I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that's real. Find out where the best Chinese food is, best Mexican food, best Italian food. Just little stuff like that makes you look. We're going right back to knowledge. It's all knowledge. It's all stuff that works. Okay. Um, other important things um, as far as when to write offers, that's kind of changed a little bit because you got to write them now. I mean, if you got a client, you show them a property on Saturday. You better be writing it on Saturday. And if they say that we're going to review all offers on Monday, oh, bullshit. bullshit. Write it anyway. Bullshit. bullshit. Write it anyway. 
But part of your conversation is going to be response time, and we're going to get to that in a second, okay? Um, tools. Anybody got the MHG app? Anybody in Elevate? And if you're not, I want to know why you guys aren't in Elevate. Because we invented it, and it's awesome. <laughs> I'll talk to you about that in another class. Um, so MHG has an app that's amazing, and every one of your clients should have it. So if your clients are out driving around, what are they going to do? Where are they going to go to look for properties? Well, let's just go through them. They're going to call Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com. How many of those go to you? I can keep going. How many of those go to you? Zero. If they have our app, which does everything all those other apps do, where is it going? You. Not me. Not you. Not you. You. Your clients are going to your app. And it tells them everything you want to know. And when the house comes up, if they're in front of it, they just open the app and they're like, oh, that's selling for six seventy five. Would you like to see a showing? That's all it takes. Boom, guess what you get? These clients are in front of this house right now and would like to see it. If you can't do it, you can't do it, but at least now they're calling you and not Zillow and, and I can't say his name because it's probably like I'm not supposed to, but this guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, doing recon in neighborhoods. So there's a tough call. So if somebody calls you and, and you live in in Glendale, and they're like, hey, we really like the Mesa area. Is that an area of expertise for you? How many people are going to say, no, it's not. You should call somebody else. No. I'm not. I'm going to go recognize the area. I'm going to go scout it out, at least know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I had that happen yesterday. I have a client that's trying to decide between Glendale and Chandler, or Gilbert and Chandler. So I called an old buddy of mine and said, I'm going to ask you a simple question. What's the difference between Gilbert and Chandler? And we talked for a half an hour. And I'm writing notes. Stuff that I didn't know. I mean, I know a little bit about Gilbert. I know a little bit about Chandler. I know that Chandler's all about Intel. And I know that Gilbert's made a huge change and it's all about the Mormon faith. And there's a lot to know about that. But I found out some really good stuff because I got a client that's going to be looking at there starting next week. Dude, it. it's all your recon. And what does that give you when you do that? Everybody? Knowledge. Talk about that best word. Did I spell that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Now this is going to be the okay. This is the this is the meat of the class, guys. Uh, you got a PQF or a pre-approval or whatever it is that you need. Read the listing. When I say read the listing, I mean read the listing. Okay. So if I put a listing up and I say um, showings between five and eight the first week because of children or a sleeping baby or whatever it is, whatever you put in the listing. Do you know how many agents don't read that and they just call like, yeah, can I see it at like two o'clock or they do a showtime request at two o'clock, which is clearly says in the listing that that's when the baby's napping. How many, how many agents are you going to actually consider accepting an offer from that didn't even read the listing? If I'm a listing agent, I'm going with the pro. I'm going to go with the guy that, that asked me all the right questions. That's the secret sauce of this class, asking all the right questions. But, but read the listing, read, read, read the listing. And if they put something in the listing that's in the wrong place, that's okay. It's still information you needed to know. So if it's in semi-private or private, or if it's in the listing instructions where it says use showtime, but you have to call the agent too, or whatever it is, read the whole listing because they can, they can contradict themselves. They can have one thing in, in the, in the um, comments or in the remarks, private remarks, and then they'll say something completely different. Then it's a phone call. Hey, I just want to let you know I was reading the listing and I saw that it says this, but then down here it says this, so I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. When's a good time for me to do my showing time request? I did that when I was writing a contract and I asked the listing agent, I said, this states that washer and dryer are included and then it says yep. they're not. Which one is it? You know what he said? Let me call my assistant because I don't have that information. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what did I tell you? Ninety percent of realtors, I, I believe, should not even a they shouldn't be practicing real estate, but mm -hmm. half of them shouldn't drive either. So <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to have a team, organize it well. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So have your paperwork in line, in line, right? Your buyer broker, your pre-QF, whatever it is you need to move forward with your clients. Be prepared. Have knowledge. Now it's time to ask the right questions, but don't be a kiss ass. Don't, don't think that because they're the listing agent, they can just walk all over you. That's bullshit. Excuse my language. That's BS. Don't play that game. You be the, you be the knowledgeable one. Okay? Treat them like an equal until they don't deserve it. 
and then try to educate them nicely and that's how you're gonna win deals. Don't tell them, well, you're such an idiot. You put this here and then you put this here. How the hell are we supposed to know? Do your clients know that you're doing this? Guess what, you're never getting an offer accepted. Mm -hmm. But if you offer them some advice because, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, I've never really seen this. Can you, can you kind of explain to me this? Or, or even like a, like a property value. Before this became a ridiculous seller's market, I would call agents and say, you know, I, I understand the house is beautiful. We went and looked at it. We love the backyard. We like the little thing here. And it's, I, I've been racking my brain trying to find comps on this. Do you have a list of the comps that you're using to price this? Is it, can you help me out with that? What do you think the answer was nine out of 10 times? Mm -hmm. No, they didn't. They just pulled a number out of the, you know what, said that's what we're gonna get because I got two other houses that sold here. They weren't model matches. One was two story, one was one story. One had a pool, one didn't have a pool. Ask questions. Mm -hmm. And then if they don't have the answer, say, oh, take a look at this one. I'm gonna send you a couple of comps. I'm gonna send these over because I'm basing my, my offer on these comps. And we want the house to sell. We don't want to end up back on the, on the market. I know you don't want that. Your clients don't want that. Let's work together and see if I can come up with the right price. You'd be amazed how many realtors would be like, yeah, okay, because guess what? They weren't smart enough to do it themselves or they weren't good enough to do it themselves and they want somebody to help them. Happens all the time. Mm -hmm. But you gotta, you gotta have tact when you do it. If you, if you pull out, you know, like Paul would call and say, you were really stupid. How did you think? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay? Teach when possible. Okay. okay, these are some of the things that you want to ask. My first question when I get a listing agent on the phone is I introduce myself, I'm with my home group. I'm sure you've heard of my home group. We have 3,200 agents around the valley. I might throw out some of our stats. You know, we, uh, we helped 20,000 people last year get into homes. Our, our brokerage is, is it's robust and we have a very good name in the industry. Um, so what I want to do is outside of price, what is it that I can write on my offer that will make it look better than everybody else's? Remember that statement, like exactly question, like that. Yeah. Exactly like that. Other than price, how can I make my offer stand out above all the others? And then start going through, how about response time? Um, it says in the listing that you're gonna make a decision on Monday. So is, is Monday at four o'clock response time good? Or what's a good time for me to write this up? And they'll tell you, yeah, we're gonna look at all offers on Monday morning, so if you did by noon, we should have an answer. Great, I'll write in noon for noon on Monday. Um, as far as close of escrow, what, what were your clients looking for? Well, you know, I didn't put it in the listing, but they kind of like to stay in there for a couple weeks on a post possession. If you could do that, that would be great. Guess what? The people that didn't call don't know that, but you do because you called. So great, how many, how many weeks did you need? Two weeks? Why don't we make it 17 days? Will that cover everybody? And then if we can close on or before a certain date, would that work for you? Guess what you're becoming? Just in this conversation, you're becoming, that's, that's the guy I wanna do business with. This is very good for my client. If they're, if they're truly standing by their fiduciary duty, everything that you're saying makes sense to them. You're helping their client. Um, uh, what about a home warranty? So my clients really like to have a home warranty only because it's kind of like an insurance policy. You know, because sometimes listers forget stuff that, that happened to the house, and you know, we've all done that. We've been through this many times before. Um, would you be okay if I write up a home warranty that's, that's paid for by the sellers? Well, you know, I don't know that I'll agree to it. Okay, I'll just write one up in my buyer's so buy it. We'll pay for it, that's okay. But I put it out there that it's gonna be in the contract, right? So now they're thinking, okay, that, that was a good question, okay? Um, I'm going off the top of my head when I should probably do this. <laughs> okay, response time we talked about, Close of escrow we talked about, um, home warranty, um, proper seller information. I pulled up the seller's information in Monsoon and it says that there's two different names on the deed. Do you want me to write it with both names or have they made any changes or, or how's that work? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, they did, they changed that up. So we would rather say the, the Monsoon Family Trust is how we actually wanted it to say. I'm like, okay, however you want to do it, as long as the legal description's correct and all that, we can do that. Another great question, it tells them, wow, this guy's asking all the right questions, right? Stuff that, guess what? They didn't think to put in the listing. So what are they doing right now? They're learning. So the next listing they do, they're gonna be like, I should have all that information in there. But if this guy didn't call me and ask all those questions, every other offer is not gonna look the same as his. Mine's gonna stand out because, guess what? Every I was dotted, every T was crossed, I don't miss anything. I go through, I write a contract, and then I go back through it two times. 
to make sure that the booze that I drank on the first one didn't mess up. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I go through it plenty of times. What about post possession? What about special needs? Um, you know, my clients are, are going to be packing up their house and, and they're going to need this. There's going to be a, a roll off in the driveway or something or whatever they might be. There's always some special circumstance. The kids are in school that day, whatever it might be. Find out as much as you can about special needs. And now you have to have a conversation about appraisals. So it, it's my opinion, and Brian and Paul, I want to I want to know if you guys agree with me on this. It's my opinion that as much as we all either love or hate appraisers, they're the savior of our industry right now. Because they're actually appraising properties for what the value is, not what for the selling price is. So how many houses are getting sold for 20 grand over appraisal, 50 grand over appraisal, 100 grand over appraisal, and stay for six months? <laughs> so all of them, right? Everybody's paying, paying dollars. So the appraisers are using the same thing they always use on a comp analysis, okay? They're looking at what the sales price was, what the list price, and what the sales price was. And they're actually comping out properties that they're using as comps to back up their, their numbers. So that's what's keeping our, our kind of our, our industry a little bit honest right now. You know, yeah, I know the house down the street sold for 50 grand more. That's because the guy in California that sold his house that was as big as this room got 2.5 million and he didn't give a shit how much the house cost. Here's 50 grand after I just want the house. Okay? So appraisers are keeping us honest. Very important to have a conversation with the listing agent as far as appraisals. So um, I took this property, we're writing up an offer. I pulled up all the comps that I could. I actually called my appraisal friend, my appraiser friend, and I asked him what he thought about this. Here's the number we came up with. I'm not asking you what number I have to have on the contract, unless you'd like to tell me where you think I should be. Pause. Okay. <laughs> Try it. You never know. You never know. There's people that'll tell you. You know, I mean, if, if I'm asking all these questions, you'd be surprised how many people, well, this guy's really sharp, and this is the guy I want to do business with. You know what, Johnny, we've, we've got four offers, nothing with cash. One of them's this, one of them's that, but you know, they're all like 10 grand over asking. Well, now I know where I gotta be. I gotta be 15 grand over asking, or 11 grand over asking. But I'm asking all the right questions, because now all of a sudden, this guy wants to work with me because I'm gonna be the best solution to get this done, okay? Hey, um, title company, talk about your title company. Um, right now, you have to say, I saw that you had no listing you'd like to use. Barbara from XYZ Title, I understand that. Let me ask you just a quick question. Is she good communication-wise? Because we're gonna definitely, both of us are gonna want somebody that communicates really well. And What's the best way to contact her? Have you done business with her before? Because you and I both know the title's all about us. Neither of our clients really care what title company it is. And I say that. And some of them say, well, I do because it's my sister. Okay, but it's still about you because now it's just your sister. It's not about anything other than Let's get the best escrow officer. Is this who you use all the time? Yeah, tell me why. Ask questions. Oh, she's great, because she always answers back to that. Great, I have one similar, but let's go ahead and use yours. I've even, on one, the one that was a contingency, I used the same title company on that one as we were doing on the other one, and I never used them in my life. I called, asked some questions, sounded like she knew what she was doing, but I felt it was best to have both deals yeah. in the same place, and it was in the best interest of my client. Did I want the title guy that helps me get business? Did I want him to get it? Yes. Where's my fiduciary duty? To my client. So I had to do what was right by my client. Okay. Based on this conversation, I'm looking forward to working with you because you're a pro. This is where you compliment them. So that whole don't be a kiss ass thing goes out the window. On the left. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is where you kiss a little ass. Okay. Just a little. You sound like a pro. I'm looking forward to this. I don't know about you. But every deal we write, we don't go out and write five offers on a Saturday because we saw five houses we want. We only write offers on, on properties that we expect to get to close of escrow. So if I didn't think that we could get to close on this property, you wouldn't be getting an offer from me. My team, we don't waste our time. We don't, we don't fluff offers. We're really straightforward. As you can see, I'm asking you all the questions that we would need to know to know that we can get the close of escrow because ultimately that's what both of us want, right? And the, what both of our clients want. That's the secret sauce conversation. But unfortunately, a lot of agents out there think it's a competition. Because they're 90% exactly. shouldn't have a real estate license. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to you have to sell this to them. You have to teach them. Well, I'm sure you know, even though you know they don't know, 
I'm sure you know that if this doesn't get done, you're gonna have to go right back on market and look at how many properties are back on market. Go to the MLS. Right. Look how many back on market properties are. You know what most of those are? Those are all the high buyers. Mm -hmm. Or people that buy from Alaska and then come down during the inspection period and go, it's a dump, I don't want it. Okay, so I'm telling you that this offer is legit. My clients are here. Don't, don't do love letters. I'm just telling you, don't do love letters. There's two reasons for that. A, it could be a racial thing. If you say my clients are uh, uh, Muslim and they're from, all of a sudden they can make a decision and if they don't get the house, those clients can say, well, we didn't get the house because we were Muslim or because we were Mexican or Irish or black or whatever that looks like. So I don't, I don't suggest doing love letters. I think it, it clouds everything. You can tell, you know, it's a, it's a great couple. It's their first time. They got a couple kids. They like the school districts. They're really interested in the property. Keep it really basic. Try not to get too deep into that. And I don't, hope nobody's taking offense by what I just said because I don't mean it that way. Just protect yourself. Protect yourself. Code of ethics will bite you right now. All right. Nobody else seems to be living by code of ethics. Pardon me? said so nobody else seems to be living by the code of ethics these days. Okay, so remember the first thing I said? Let's make my home group agents the one that people always say, those guys are sharp. Yeah. That's the gist of this whole thing. Those guys are sharp. And the more we do that, the more all of us get our offers accepted. Or, so I don't know how many of you guys know what 72 Souls plan is, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably not supposed to call them out, but I'm gonna tell you right now what they do. You ever notice that they have an open house for an hour and a half? Yep. That's it, right? Do you know why? Because they have to. The house is already sold. They sold it to another agent in their office. It's already done. So all those hundreds of people that are going out there, what is it? It's just another ad. It's not on TV, it's not on the radio, it's not on a billboard, it's not the sun sponsorship, it's not the car. It's just another ad to get people in and say, what's your name? That's all it is. The house is sold. They sell it to their own agents. 95% of the time they're sold. Really? I was looking at one on the MLS and I noticed that it wasn't on showing time. They don't use showing time for that no. reason. Well, they do. They God. blocked it all out. They blocked. I just mm -hmm. know that yesterday. Honestly, God. Yeah, they'll, they'll block out. They'll, they'll, they'll block out a whole day yeah. and yeah. say no yeah. showings yeah. available. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guess what? And then it's closed before the next showing yeah. available. Because it's sold already. They already yeah. sold it to somebody else in their office. Well, and I actually have a friend who works for them, and I just asked her. I said, "So, what is the technique?" And when they first meet their seller, they ask the seller. They don't do homework either. They ask the seller. What's your drop dead price? What's the price you want to list this at? And that's what they do. <laughs> and then they take that information, they go, hey Mikey, there you go. Yep. It's exactly what they do. Um, it's 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 horrific what they're doing. Honestly, yeah, it's horrific. So um, <coughs> there's more to that than meets the eye. <coughs> um, because the Elevate program, we're working with a media company, so we understand how media works, how they buy and all that, which I never knew. I'm a realtor, what do I know about advertising? Um, and the media company that we we hired explained exactly how all that stuff works. So we wanted to do a Super Bowl commercial for MHG, and guess what? The, the companies that we wanted to run it with, I don't know if it was ABC, CBS, NBC, whoever had the, the Super Bowl, uh, 72 sold wouldn't allow us to run it because he's the official sponsor of the Cardinals. Oh, yeah. So we got mixed out of it. And then politicians, political ads, they pay big money. So where do you think we go on our ads? Sorry. Sorry, Mark Kelly already bought that spot for one million dollars, and your twenty thousand ain't gonna cover it, pal. So, yeah. okay, these are really important conversations. I really appreciate your time. I'll text you once I have the offer. To all accompanying documents. Very important. What I just say, you're gonna get a complete package from me. You're not just gonna get an offer. You're gonna get everything that you need. There's gonna be an appraisal waiver. There's gonna be a contingency. There's gonna be a solar dock. There's every dock that you need is gonna be in there when I sell it to you. When I send it to you. Um, are signed by my cli clients and in your email. I will call if I have any questions while writing the offer. Thanks, I look forward to working with you. Do I call them while I'm writing the offer? Sure. Right, what do I ask them? Who cares? <laughs> Is it raining over there? <laughs> <laughs> ask them something. Call them, have another conversation mm -hmm. with them. Yeah, okay? build a relationship. Build a relationship. You just educated this agent on all this stuff that he didn't know or she didn't know, and you're writing notes going, God, I should do that. I should do that. I should do that. Have another conversation with him. Just talk to him and say, you know what, just real quickly, my clients called and wanted to know, is, is, the, is the Mesa 
general hospital closer or is the, this other hospital closer? Whatever, come up with something realistic for them, something that they can answer, which would be better, so, okay? <laughs> okay, your email to the agent is important as well, very important as well. So here's my standard email. I've attached an offer and all accompanying documents for your review. And then separately, bolded, please confirm receipt. Okay, that way I know they got it. Okay, so there's no question about, I never got an offer. Okay, and if you don't get a, con a confirmation, call them, text them, email them again. I just want to make sure you got the offer. We don't want to miss out because my clients really like this mm -hmm. home. Okay, um, it is written just how we spoke. Okay, really important. So when I'm when I'm writing offers, I'm gonna tell them, here's how I'm gonna write it. We're gonna come in at this blank, this amount, if if that's part of the conversation. Um, other than price, this is what it's gonna say. It's gonna be a home warranty, refrigerator conveys, washer and dryer conveys, and that's the, the stainless one in the kitchen and the two stainless washer and dryer. Um, this, that, go through, whatever it is, very professionally, tell them exactly how that contract's gonna look. Because then you're gonna say, I wrote it exactly how we spoke about it. There's no changes, there's no surprises. How many times do you think people write offers and all of a sudden something's a little bit different in page eight where you get to write in what you want, okay? Um, are you related to the sellers? Do I need to write in there that you're, you're a licensed realtor? Stuff like that, all that should be in there so that when they get that contract, they've got eight contracts in front of them and this one, there's no questions about this offer, none. Every I is dotted, every T is crossed. I know exactly what they want. They've, we've discussed everything that's important to it. This one, I, they want me to pay for a home warranty. Well, my clients don't want to do that. Guess what? I had that conversation with you already. This one, I, I don't get this. They want to close on or before based on a contingency with an XYZ and how the hockey playoffs end and what happens <laughs> in football. And that offer's getting thrown out, guys. If they can't understand it, trust me, their clients aren't going to understand it. Even worse, okay? So... Um, or if there's a change, say, or I did this, but only do that if you did something that's better for them. You understand what I mean? Like, you know what? I decided we're just going to pay for the home warranty. So if they already said we're good, they wanted to get a little higher end home warranty. So you know what? They're just going to pay for it because they wanted to go to, to a little higher scale home warranty. So we're just going to take that on. That's when you do that. That's when you say I made a change. Don't make a change. Say, oh, by the way, we changed our offer from 550 to 510. <laughs> okay, that's not what you want to write there. Okay. Um, please feel free to call me if you wish to discuss offer or if you have any questions. As we spoke about, we do not write offers that we do not intend to close. Um, my team and I are looking forward to working with your team. I can send this to you. You can use it word by word. You can change it to whatever you want. This is the magic. This is the magic. You've got to have that conversation with them and you gotta, you got to reiterate your conversation with your next conversation with them because now you look like a pro. Now, if they're doing the fiduciary duty to their clients, your offer is going to get them to close of escrow. Okay, there's very little doubt that your offer is going to get them there. If it's price, and if they only care about price, you might get out. But if they care about getting this to close with all the little I's dotted and T's crossed, this is the conversation, which all of them should. But there's always sellers that are like, like hey, get me 750 and I don't care what it looks like, I want 750 out of it. And I'm paying you five. You pay the other guy, you, this one, that's what I want. I'm a numbers guy, this is all I care about. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, those are the ones you can't necessarily do. Um, stuff to ask, how many offers do you have, currently have in hand? Okay, not, well I had four people call me and they all said they were gonna write offers. Ask them how many you have in hand. Um, are any of them cash? Yep, I do have a cash offer, okay? Don't ask them what it's for. If they wanna tell you, keep the conversation going, they might divulge it, okay? Um, would your clients consider a strong offer that is not cash? Now they're going to tell you, no, my clients love the cash idea. They want to be out in 12 days. So why even waste your time with the offer? You know, I really appreciate you being honest. And do you have an offer that fits that? We do. So now it's just, you're just done. There's not, there's not a whole lot you can do, right? Um, unless, what if I have a cash offer as well? Mm -hmm. Because now I have, a, now I have a, a program that could work for this. Now you have that conversation. Three listing agents that I've had that conversation with all said, what can you tell me more about this homework thing? That's awesome. Yeah. That's really a cool program. Because I asked them, have you heard about homework? 
You know, and Jimmy's, I told Jim about homework, he went ballistic. Oh, such a bitch. I'm like, calm down. <laughs> you know, Jim, right? Yeah. I'm like, calm down, this is good for you. Because yes. you, you get the financing going out, relax. Right. Take it easy. Mm. But Jim's like, oh! Yeah. And he's screaming at me. And everybody else, he was screaming at me. Son of a... Um, is there anything specific that was not on the listing that is important to your clients? We kind of discussed that. Anything else that I can offer to make my offer, that I can add to make my offer stand out? And then if you want to, if you feel like you're having the right conversation, this is a feel thing. This is a sense. If you feel like you could say the following, would an offer at 480, whatever the number is, would an offer at 480 with X, X, and X, and this be a waste of my time writing up? They'll tell you. <coughs> Most of them will say, yeah, Johnny, we've got, we've got offers higher than that. But come out with your top. Don't play the game. Make sure your clients know, tell, us, tell me what you're willing to pay for this property. And I need to know what that number is. Not like, let's go and let's, we'll see what, right. because that's done. Negotiations that are done. They're gonna make a decision on what we write on that paper. You're not getting a second chance at it. You're not getting two swings at this ball. So give me the number. And, and to be honest with you, if you have a conversation with your clients, look, if you buy this property at, that's at 460 and you offer 480, within three months, you're gonna make 20 grand on it anyway because everything's going up 21% a month anyway. So yeah, I mean, how, how far off are you? You're gonna have to have a little more cash to come in because it may not appraise. Then again, maybe it will appraise. We don't know, it might come in under. You gotta make sure that you got that cash to, a lot of conversations, a lot of moving parts here, okay? Okay. And then have a conversation. Hey, I'm a full-time realtor. Let them know that. If you're a full-time realtor, let them know that. Because if it's a good realtor, they're going to say, they do this for a living. This is how I feed my family. I don't just go out and write offers and then go drive trucks. Or I don't own a restaurant. This is what I do. I'm not a soccer mom. I'm not a police officer. I'm none of those things. This is what I do for a living. Um, and I respect your time. Thanks for taking the time to discuss this with me. That's the end of your conversation. Okay? Thank them. When you hang up and go, man, that guy's an idiot. <laughs> it's gonna happen more than you're gonna hang up and go, wow, what a nice, what a nice gal. And she's spying on me. She's a pro. <laughs> I'm telling you. And you're gonna hang up and go, wow, what a pro. Or you're gonna go, oh my god, that person was an idiot. Almost done, Cal. Oh hi. Okay. Let's <laughs> uh, turn the lights out. <laughs> this little time check. Okay. All right. Appraisal conversation. Um, I think we discussed that, right? Yeah. On how appraisers. Yeah. Uh, do you do you prepare a package for an appraiser by a show of hands? How many prepare something for the appraiser? Yeah, good idea, especially right now. Um, and the reason is I just uh, what's that guy's name? John Joseph? J. J. Joseph. J. Joseph. I just took a CE class and I asked him straight out in the class. I said, Jay, how many times do appraisers turn down a package from a realtor that because they think they're trying to sway them in some way? And he goes, very rarely. And I was like surprised. I was like, because whenever I talk to an appraiser, I'm like, hey, look, I know my card says realtor, yours says appraiser. I did some comp work on this. Can I send it to you or can I meet you at the property and give it to you? Your job is your job. I'm not going to get in your way and, and you're the boss. I'm not an appraiser, but I think this might help you with, and you might not like my comps. You might like them. How many, how many appraisers do you think actually want those? Oh, my God. One who literally said, I want nothing from you. Yeah. And then, because, and then they, they're like, mm -hmm. who do you think you are? Realtor, I'm an appraiser. You know? <laughs> it happens, offer though. And then if they say yes, put together a binder with a picture of the house and the address and the square footage and as much information as you can and print out your comps and make it like, here, let me do your entire job for you, mm -hmm. you jerk. <laughs> take, out the, take, out the, take out the you jerk part. <laughs> okay. No, but I, it's, it's helped lately though because there's been so many that tell me like it was helpful because of everything that's going on in the market and how difficult it is to get just straight comps anymore. Mm -hmm. There's like so many things going on and I did, I mean just because it was easiest for me to see it laid out that way, I did an Excel spreadsheet and emailed it over like the different thing and he was like that was super helpful and I mean luckily you know we were able to get it yeah. where it needed to be but it was just like and I was on, I was representing the buyer, so a lot of times they were surprised that I'm, I was working with the seller's agent to help the situation, but at the end of the day, my buyer was like, I want the property, it means I gotta pay 5,000 more versus 25,000 more or whatever, like, I'm, it's still want, helpful. Do you wanna take it another step? Try this one. 
pull a comp that's not a comp yet. Yeah. So if I did. You, if you see a property that's UCB, yep. call the agent and say, hey, I'm trying to I'm trying to buy a house down the street and the the uh, appraiser's letting me help with coming. Can you just tell me we're not we're not gonna come in after if this falls out and try to we're just trying to get this comp done. And most agents will tell you, yeah, we're under contract for four fifty nine. Well what I agreed to also was to share what I had done with them. So right. that in case they ran into any issues because yeah. they took the time to talk with me about it mm -hmm. and it helped because she sent me an email after two different times this has happened sent me an email after saying thank you so much for sending it to me it helped us get where we needed to yeah. so now everybody won and i'm going to go right back to yeah. you're helping them be a professional yeah you're just helping them and all of a sudden they look great because you made them look great and the appraiser did say hey look technically we can't use that one it hasn't closed yet like but but it's good for us to know yeah and i'm like all right, right. Hey, you can do what you want but um yeah that's it. That's the whole deal. So, what's the secret sauce? No, no, no. No. Oh, no. No. And, and it's all what you can get out of the listing agent. Your conversation with the listing agent is absolutely imperative that you perfect that conversation. Can you go one slide back? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can send this to you too if anybody wants. Oh, it. Yes. 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 Just send me an email and I'll I'll send it to you. Oh. Was this helpful? Yes. yes. Very. Give me your email. Well, everybody except you. I'm not. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, guys, seriously, what the, the the one point I want to I want to stress here is conversation and knowledge and all that stuff that we went through. But this brokerage is all about this. I'm an agent here, and this is working for me. Like it really works. I've done this time and time again. I'm getting, I mean, I'm getting, I think the most offers that I wrote with any client was five, and that was my fault because I didn't put the brakes on it in the beginning. And I said, we're not doing that anymore. So I'm maybe one or two offers, and I'm getting stuff accepted. First time, you know, just get the other agent to believe in you and, and make sure that you pat them on the back a little bit. That's where that little kiss ass comes in a little bit. You know? And if well, homework's going to be a big difference maker for me because my the last three clients have lost out to cash deals. Tell me, it's a godsend for us. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, and if they do that once, now they'll listen to you about homework and call and right. get the whole mortgage app done. Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah. Any other question? And that takes about three business days, so if you've got to have a plan ahead, you can't have yeah. decide to do that on Saturday. Right. Um, just so I make, I want to make sure that everyone knows. So when I send an offer, I send the offer to the listing agent, my transaction coordinator, and my lender. Mm -hmm. All three get the, right. get the offer. Mm -hmm. So my transaction coordinator is aware that there's an offer out there, and then when they, when it comes back to everybody, yeah, we're going to accept your offer. There's three of us that have to go woohoo instead of just me and then my transaction coordinator is on it yeah. i do say something about my transaction coordinator in my email judith has been with me for this long she, she's a, she beats me up all the time to make sure i dot every i and cross every t and she's my right arm and i couldn't do it without her and and then nine times out of ten they're like hey can we talk to her i'm like yeah of course you can because she does such a great job so yeah. but she, they got to be mhg agent so anything else so with Homeward, um, so, okay, they're going to go take over the house and then, okay, they're going to purchase the house, the client's going to be in it until they can move out because they can get the loan, whatever. Um, what happens with that? Does the Point listing, zero. as far as the listing is concerned, would that go back to the agent, the buyer's yeah, agent? Yeah, you're listening. It would? Okay. You're listing the client's house, so you get the price, but you get the to buy with homework and then the listing with your client putting it on the market okay you okay. get paid okay. you get paid twice actually okay. they're talking about making a change on when you get paid um they I think homework they used to pay when when the lease period was it. over but now i think they pay the realtor when they close okay that was a change they just made so yeah homework's great but but really and i said this right when brian was in here i use them as a tool it's a leverage it's leveraging too and he has no problem with that because he's going to get some you know, um, here's one thing about homework that you got to be really careful of, and it was something that I found out. Luckily, I thought of it before it bit me in the ass. Yeah. Sun City has a thirty-seven hundred dollar yeah. fee, yeah. capital. Yeah. So yeah. if they buy it, they have to pay that, and then when you buy it, you have to pay it again. Oh wow! So that's a double whammy. So that was a place where homework was like, yeah, you know, because because trust me the HOA they're charging it they don't give a crap okay. what year and DC Ranch would be the same thing DC Ranch Half same thing so you got to be careful with that yeah. oh. 
okay? And, and one more question. Do they have limits as to where the person is from? Because I have a client that's a Florence. Yeah. I don't not that yeah. I know I mean they're in several states now so okay. so just so you know they're they dollars they got lots of money to buy okay. houses so they're not they're not they're so not backing they, off they go they we put them as the purchaser yes you write the contract yep. they send you instructions on how to write the contract and you fill it out the way their instructions are but but you write the contract exactly the way you would have written it for your clients uh, yeah, well, home warranty. Right. Don't change anything yeah. because that's exactly how. So the other happen. thing that uh, the that other thing is it. during the inspection period. So the the question always becomes, what happens if the house then we get sixty days down and it's not appraising? Well, the protection 